Yeah, I think it's gonna work. <laughs> Hey guys, if you enjoy watching the guitar building videos that I post up here on my YouTube channel, I'd appreciate it if you might consider supporting my channel by visiting my YouTube merch store. Down below the description for this video, you'll see my merch shelf. And on that shelf, I've got t-shirts, plans for building guitars, and plans for making the tools that we use to build guitars. And if you can't see that merch shelf, don't worry, there's a link in the description as well. So just know that any purchase you make is gonna help support this channel, plus you're getting something in return. Now, if you would like to support the channel, but don't wanna spend any money, that's okay too. Just be sure to click the thumbs up button. That'll tell YouTube to promote my videos. Now let's get on with today's video. In this episode, what I'm gonna be doing is the initial assembly of my four string bass guitar build. And as you can see, I've already uh, done the initial assembly. Everything has been installed, so I'm kind of going back in time. But the reason why I do an initial assembly before I buff out the finish on my guitar is because I know from experience that when you assemble a guitar, you can be fairly rough on that nicely buffed out high gloss shine, which can cause scratches, and that forces you to revisit that whole process of buffing, uh, and in some cases, level sanding as well. So to prevent that, uh, I like to do my initial assembly now, and this will give me a chance to drill all the pilot holes, to position the bridge, get the pickup set up right, solder all my electronics, install the neck, install the tuners, I'll make the nut, I'll get everything stringed up, and I will do an initial fret leveling, and then I can make sure that everything is, is dialed in just perfect and that's gonna work just right. Then I will disassemble the whole guitar, level sand, polish sand, and buff out the finish. Then I'll do the final assembly, and the final assembly is so much easier to do at that point because all the work was done during that initial assembly. So it's just a matter of bolting everything together. And that means there's less of a chance of scratching my beautiful high gloss mirror-like shine that I worked so hard to achieve. So let's jump in and get started. Bass guitars, even with humbucker pickups, can still be kind of noisy. So I'm gonna to try to keep it quiet by lining the cavities with conductive uh, copper foil tape. Before I can install the humbuckers, I have to mark the position of where to drill the pilot holes for the mounting screws. And to do that, I just use the cover and a small drill bit to mark those locations. I prefer to use memory foam to install the pickups instead of springs because I find that springs can generate too much feedback. And of course to install the pickups I have to drill pilot holes where I marked them earlier. As I installed the pickups, you may notice that the pickups are actually sitting too low into the body. And that was because I discovered the memory foam pieces that I had cut were not quite thick enough. So I ended up swapping those out for thicker ones. Of course, the back of the pick guard has to be shielded as well, otherwise there's no point to shielding the cavities. The controls that I'm using on this guitar are pretty standard for a precision bass equipped with a humbucker. I'm using a Switchcraft jack as well as a pair of pots, one for volume and one for tone. Thank you. 
To keep my soldering work as clean as possible, I'm gonna cut the wire as close to the length that I need as possible. That way I can keep the runs short and everything nice and organized. In order for the volume pot to work correctly, I have to bend one of the end lugs up against the back so it's grounded. To make the process of soldering the wire easier, as well as to improve the connection, I'm going to strip the ends of the wire and then pre-tin them with solder. I'm also going to pre-tin the lugs on each of the controls, and I'm also going to solder that lug that I bent up against the back of the volume pot so that I can ensure uh, proper grounding. The wiring scenario that I followed for my base is just a basic uh, humbucker wiring scenario. And it's really probably one of the most basic circuits known to man. And of course, one cannot forget the importance of the ground wire. The last step in the wiring process is to clip off any excess wire just to make everything nice and clean. Before I install the pickguard, I'm going to insert a piece of copper foil into the cavity and then over onto the surface of the guitar. That piece will then contact the foil that's on the back of the pickguard, ensuring that all the foil is grounded. After soldering the pickup leads to the controls, I can screw down the pickguard into place. The neck is then pressed into the neck pocket and screwed down into place. The four half inch hip shot tuners are installed and I'm careful to make sure that everything is lined up properly. To finish installing the tuners, I install the tiny little screws in the back. And here's a tip for you. Scrape the threads against a bar of soap or candle wax so that they uh, screw in much more easily and won't break off. To position the hip shot bridge, the first thing I'll do is I'll move the saddles as far forward as they can go to the point where they come off the screws. Then I'll back them up about an eighth of an inch. Since the scale length of this base is 34 inches, I'll measure back from the center of the 12th fret, 17 inches, and that's where I'll place the front of the saddles for the bridge. Then I'll place a piece of tape at the front of the bridge just to help keep things positioned correctly. While it might seem logical to position the bridge based on the center line of the neck, that's not the correct way to do it, especially with a base. And that's because the strings are so thick. So what I'll do is I will first use the E string and check the alignment of the string from the nut all the way to the bridge saddle 
with respect to the edge of the fretboard. Then I'll do the same thing with the G string on the other side. Doing this will ensure that the strings always have the right amount of space between the edge of the string and the edge of the fretboard. However, it can mean that the bridge isn't perfectly centered. And once I'm satisfied with the position of the bridge, I can mark and drill the pilot holes for mounting the bridge. And I almost forgot, I need to ground the bridge, which grounds the strings. So I had to drill a hole at an angle from underneath the bridge all the way to the control cavity. Then I installed the ground wire and taped that with some copper foil tape. One of the things that I love about this hip shot bridge is that I can actually individually adjust the side to side position of the saddles. And of course, let's not forget the strap buttons. Okay, well at this stage, I'm about 90% through the whole process of the initial assembly. I still have to make the nut, and then I'm gonna do an initial fret leveling. However, I'm gonna save that for the next episode because there's a lot of work involved in making the nut and doing that initial level. So I wanna devote an entire episode to just that work. So in the meantime, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Uh, if so, please, as always, subscribe, comment, like, share, do all that good stuff. And if you would like to help support the channel, you can visit my merch shelf down below and purchase a plan. Or at the very least, you can click the thanks button and leave a tip. So at any rate, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back to join me for uh, the continuation of this guitar build. <laughs>